your characteristics are not only controlled by your genes, but also your environment. Our genes control our characteristics. However, our environment plays a big role as well. Some characteristics like blood group are purely controlled by genes. They cannot be changed by environment. It doesn't matter if you drink lots of blood as a vampire, you're not gonna change your blood group, okay? Others, such as hair color, can be influenced by both. So you have a genetic hair color, but also your environment plays a role. So we can represent characteristics or phenotypes in a kind of Venn diagram like this. Some are just controlled by genes, things like blood group, sex, earlobe shape, whether they hang down or whether they're joined in, whether you can roll your tongue or not, okay? Handedness, whether you're left or right-handed. Some are your environment, your accent, your tattoos and scars, they're not gonna be passed on, it doesn't matter what happens, they're not in your genes, they will not pass on to your offspring. But actually a lot of your characteristics are controlled by both, okay? So you have a natural ability for playing football, also your, your environment plays a role now if you practice and learn at a young age and those kind of things. Uh, freckles, you know, you get freckles, some people have more freckly than others, so it must be genetic to a certain extent, but then when you get more sun, the freckles come out more, so it's environment as well. So the characteristics controlled by your genes can be passed on to your offspring. However, the characteristics by your environment cannot be passed on. Environmental variation has a much greater effect in plants because they're really affected by things like rain, minerals, temperature, and sunlight as to how they grow and how they develop. So the environment plays a probably a bigger role in um, the variation you see within plants. Sometimes a gene can mutate, gene mutation. Now, a mutation is a rare random change in your DNA. Remember your DNA is a, is a code, a sequence of bases, A's, T's, C's, and G's, and that can change, that code can change. And if that happens, it could be passed on to the next generation. It could create a new allele. That's how new alleles occur. That's how we get evolution happening. However, most mutations don't really have any effect or they can be quite serious sometimes and they lead to things like cancers. So mutations change the sequence of bases in a gene. Different bases means you're gonna get different amino acids. This can then change the protein. So this all relates to the process of protein synthesis, which you can learn about in my other video on that topic. Um, but essentially, you need to know how the genetic code works. Remember, it works in threes called codons. So here we've got AAC, CAG, but I'm gonna change, I'm gonna have a mutation here. I've just added in a T. So now, actually, everything's been shifted along. And my first codon will be ATA, and that may well code for a different amino acid. That may then change the protein structure, and that could then lead to maybe um, a problem with the shape of the, of the protein, and then it may not work anymore. Remember, enzymes are proteins. They have very, very specific shapes which are caused by their amino acid sequence, and that, that shape, that active site, has to fit the substrate. So if I get a mutation and um, it changes the shape of the active site, then that enzyme wouldn't work anymore. Most mutations, as I said, don't really do anything. And this could be because either the new codon ends up coding for the same amino acid. Remember, there are 64 codons, only 20 amino acids. So I could get a change in my codons, but actually it just codes the same amino acid anyway. So it hasn't made any difference, that mutation. It occurs in a recessive allele, so it just gets masked by the dominant allele anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Or the mutation happens in a really minor section of DNA that doesn't really code for anything obvious or important. Some have a very small effect and only slightly change a person's characteristics. And some mutations can have a significant effect on the phenotype. They could end up being really harmful or they might end up being beneficial. Harmful ones can cause cancer to develop uh, or it could be a new allele that gives a selected advantage to that organism, maybe slightly longer hair or something like that, which in a winter animal that lives in um, cold conditions might be an advantage. So, these kind of mutations increase variation in a population and that's a good thing to help the, pop the organism survive long term and to evolve. If mutations occur in body cells, then usually the body cell will die and it won't be passed on. However, if a mutation occurs in a sex cell, then it could be passed on to that next generation. Mutations are random events, but the occurrence can be increased by ionizing radiation, stuff like UV light or x-rays and chemicals called mutagens, which you get in cigarettes. Um, and stuff like mustard gas.